fly over as I'm doing this video. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, well, let's go. <laughs> Action. Hey guys, for those who don't know me, my name's Brooke, and I'm going to be going over one of my favorite passions, which is free diving for lobsters. I'm going to tell you everything that I know to help you be successful with catching lobsters. So I'm going to talk about basically four things. I'm going to talk about the gear that you need. I'm going to talk about techniques, how to catch them, and what you need for the different techniques. I'm going to teach you how to measure a lobster, and I'm going to teach you how to clean a lobster. So we got four like main topics to talk about, so let's get started. Alright, so the main thing is the gear that you need, the basic gear that you need. For free diving, you're going to need a mask and snorkel, which is your basic mask and snorkel. It doesn't have to be very fancy. Honestly, I've had this mask since I was probably seven years old. So they last a long time as long as you take care of them. Just a regular snorkel. And then you're going to need a pair of fins. I've also had these fins for a long time. You don't have to get those long ones. I do have a pair of long fins, but you don't need them. Especially if you're just free diving and you're in shallow water, just a simple pair of fins will be good enough for you. And then you're gonna need a pair of gloves. Now you wanna invest in a good pair of gloves because lobsters are very spiny, they're sharp. These have rubber on the inside, and I think these gloves are pretty good. I've gone through a lot of pair of gloves, which you will, you know, maybe after a couple seasons, you wear through them. Gloves are definitely important. Don't get a pair of gloves like this that are thin, just like a cloth material. You don't want that. They'll be like spining you through your gloves all day long and your hands will hurt. Not a good idea. So get a good pair of gloves. That's the basic gear you need. Another thing is your mask tends to fog up a lot and people like spit in it to try to get rid of fog. We found to be a great thing to get rid of fog in your mask is toothpaste so we all always bring toothpaste with us when we go lobstering you just put a little dab in your mask you smear it around you wash it out and that really helps with keeping the fog out of your mask so that's a good tip for you next thing that you need to have is a dive flag you actually this is legal you need to have a dive flag with you when you're lobstering when you're diving all right so that was all the basic things you need now i'm going to talk about the things that you need for the different techniques to actually catch the lobsters. The basic thing is to catch them with your hands. With your gloves on, stick your arm under a rock and be able to grab them. But there are situations where you can't do that. Let's say that the rock has a really deep ledge and you can't reach the lobsters. So then you're gonna have to have some tools with you. The basic lobstering tool is a tickle stick. They can be just a straight stick like this or they can have like a little curve to them or a lot of them have this little bend at the edge right here. You're going to stick this in the rock and you're going to use it to tickle the lobster out. That's why it's called a tickle stick. And so you're going to get the lobster out and then typically you have a net with you. So you're going to tickle the lobster out of the rock and then you're going to net it. The basic nets that everyone has are usually these like blue, sometimes they're green. So I have footage of me actually using this underwater so I'm going to play that right now. When you use the tickle stick in the net, once you tickle the lobster out with one hand, you use this net to go behind the lobster and lobsters go backwards. So the lobster is going to go backwards into your net and once it's in this net, you can't just leave it in the net. You're going to have to grab it in the net. If you don't grab it in the net, it can just come out of your net because this thing isn't very deep. So that's why I don't really like using these. I actually have video of me having one get in the net and then come out of the net. So there's that. These do actually work really good and a lot of people use these. but what we like using is my neighbor actually designs these clear nets. Now he made these. Um, I'm not sure if you can find one of these. I've never seen anyone else have these before. We use these a lot. Now it's the same thing. We use a tickle stick to get the lobster out of the rock. And then we just use it to place it. Here's the lobster. Here's the tail. Actually, I have a lobster. This is actually a pool toy. <laughs> it's plastic. so. Here's your lobster. So you're gonna use this, if you can see this, and put the net behind the tail like this. And all you're gonna do is put it on top of the lobster. And then with your other hand, you would come over and grab the lobster. And there you go. Really simple. It definitely helps that this thing is clear because they can't see it. Whereas like the blue net, they can actually see that. So this thing definitely helps a lot. Again, I don't know if you can buy something like this. If you guys are interested in getting one of these, you can email me and we can see what we can work out. That's what we like using. The next thing we don't ever use, but a lot of people do use, is a snare. So you got this wire part on this side, so long stick. And then on this side is your mechanism where you can pull 
and when you pull it, the metal part closes. So you pull this end and it closes. The way you would use it is your lobster would be here and you put it behind its tail and once you get it behind its tail, you would pull this and it gets tight on the lobster and there you go. You never even have to touch the thing. Here's your lobster. <laughs> um, and you would get, put it around the tail. Once you got it around the tail like this under the rock, then you would pull the back end and it would get tight and there you go. That's how a snare works. Now the reason we don't use these is my dad actually has a scary story with one of these where he's never liked using these but he dove one time with someone who was using one of these and a lot of times you have giant coral heads where you can't see on the other side of the coral head. Now him and his friend were both free diving, they're both going under to the same rock where there was lobsters under. So he was on one side of the rock and his friend was on the other side of the rock. Now they couldn't see each other. Now my dad stuck his hand in this rock for a lobster and his friend actually had a snare on the other side of the rock and he put the snare around the lobster and my dad had his hand on the lobster and the guy actually got the snare around my dad's wrist thinking that it, he got the lobster he pulled it tight and so it was tight on my dad's wrist so now he's on one side of the rock and my dad's on the other with the tight snare around my dad's wrist and he has no idea what's on the other end of his snare. He think, he's thinking it's the lobster because he can't really see what he has because it's like a deep rock. Now, luckily, my dad was able to pull his arm. No, there it went. <laughs> now, luckily, my dad was able to actually pull the entire snare through the rock. Now, a lot of times there's rocks where there's lots of things inside and rarely does a rock have an opening from one side all the way to the other side perfectly where you can fit a, what, three and a half foot snare all the way through it. So luckily my dad was able to pull that snare all the way through and come up because if he hadn't been able to pull that thing out and the guy had still had it tighter on his wrist, you know, and had no idea, like, it could have ended bad. Obviously you could drown that way, like these things can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing or you know there you can always have an accident luckily my dad was able to pull through the rock and come up to the surface with this snare around his wrist that's definitely a lesson for that if you want to use these I know a lot of people who do use them you know be careful with them <laughs> okay so that's your basic methods of how to catch them you got the snare you got your net choices and then you have the tickle stick to tickle them out of the rock and of course you can always use your hands that's how we like doing it a lot of times as long as the situation is like good for it where we can actually grab it and the rock isn't too deep where you can't actually reach them. Now that you know the basics of the gear you need and the techniques, I'm going to go over how to measure the lobsters once you actually catch them. Legally, a Florida lobster has to have a three inch carapace to be able to keep to actually have it be legal. Now, to measure a lobster, you need something called a lobster gauge, which looks similar to this or it could look like this. They come in a lot of different colors. Some are metal, some are plastic. We actually made these. My dad actually had these made by a metal maker to be exactly three inches. Now, a lot of gauges tend to be a little bit different. You know, they might be an eighth inch larger, they might be an eighth of an inch smaller. You know, plastic doesn't hold its shape perfectly. That might be the reason why, you know, it might stretch or shrink a little bit. I don't know exactly, but a lot of times if you have multiple lobster gauges on the boat, you can line them all up and they'll all be a little bit different. Another thing is a lot of times they put lobster gauges on the same gauge as a stone crab gauge. Now, stone crabs have to be two and three quarter inch claws to keep and lobsters have to be three inches. Now, let's say you have one of these bad boys on the boat and you go to measure your lobster and you accidentally use the crab side, which is two and three, two and three quarters inch, you're going to end up being able to keep lobsters that are too small. That's a mistake that happens. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. We've done it before and then we've realized later on, like on the boat, like, oh gosh, we're using the wrong side and we've had to throw lobsters back. Another airplane. <laughs> well, that might sound like a stupid mistake to you, but it happens. Definitely get yourself a good gauge. Now, to actually measure the lobster, I'm going to use my little lobster here. This part of the body is called the carapace. And then you have the tail. These right here are horns. You got their eyes right here. These are the knuckles. And then you have your antennas. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your measurement, which lobsters have to be three inches. So that's that space between here. So you put it right here between the eyes. You're going to put that piece right there. And then the back end piece, 
you put down here. Now, if this were to have been on this side of the t on this side of the head, it would be a short lobster. So, because I put this piece here and this goes to here, and it doesn't pass the back of the head, then that means it's a legal size lobster. So again, if it went to here, then that would mean it's a short lobster. So that's a legal lobster. This one here is even bigger. You see how far that is from there? That's an even bigger lobster. Legally, you're supposed to measure your lobsters in the water, and if they're too short, you let them go. If they're keepers, you know, if they're legal, you can keep them. You're not actually supposed to put them on the boat and measure them on the boat. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about is how to clean a lobster. Now, I don't have one with me, but I do have footage of me cleaning one before, so here's Brooke in the past to teach you how to clean a lobster. So to clean this lobster, we're going to take the tail off from the head. So what you do, the easiest way, this is what I find, is tuck the tail in like this, one hand on the tail, one hand on the head, I definitely suggest wearing gloves because lobsters have so many horns that are just very spiky and you'll tear up your hands if you don't use gloves. So tuck your tail in like this, grab like this, and all you do is twist and that's all you gotta do and it comes right out, just like that. Easiest way to take out, see this thing hanging out right here? That's the digestive tract. Now you can pull it out but it doesn't take everything out properly if you pull it out from that side. So the easiest cleaning tool to use is their very own antenna. So you're going to break off the tip of the antenna like this and you're going to stick it in this hole here right at the base of the tail, tuck it in there and then you're going to pull it out and it's going to pull out that digestive tract just like that. They do sell tools for doing this but you don't really have to buy a tool because the lobsters come with their very own tool. <laughs> and there's that and you can just get rid of that. And then another thing is a lot of people stick a knife in the lobster and they go around the head like this all around the body and then they can take the tail off and you usually get more meat that way. A lot of people only eat the tail. You can eat the legs, you can eat the knuckles, the antennas actually have meat inside of them. You actually do get a lot of meat in the legs and in the knuckles. And another thing, you can boil the whole head and you can make um, lobster bisque out of it. That's really good. All right, well, I think that's all I have for you guys. I hope I did a good job explaining. I mean, hopefully you learned something. Maybe you didn't. Maybe you got to laugh at me. <laughs> I don't really know. If you have any questions, definitely comment down below. You can always email me. My email's in the description. Lobster season in Florida is from August 6th to March 31st, so you still have time to get out there and try it. The water's getting a little colder, but you definitely can still get out there. Give it a go. Let me know how it goes if you do go. I mean, I love to hear you guys' stories. I love to hear all the comments. You guys have been awesome and you're so supportive, so thank you for that. All right, one last thing, guys. I'm actually working with this company called Scales. As you can see, I'm wearing their stuff. It's actually my friend's family's company. Definitely check it out. They're changing the game of fishing apparel and outdoor apparel. It's awesome stuff. I'm gonna link it down in the description. You guys can go give it a look. I mean, they have this shirt where, I don't have my hands on it yet, but you can get dirt on it, fish blood on it and it just washes right off. It doesn't get into the actual fiber of the clothes. Literally, you can get blood on it and spray it off, comes right off, doesn't stain. So I haven't got one of those yet. I have seen it. I've seen people pour coke on it and it literally runs right off. It's pretty awesome. Definitely check that out, give it a look. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in that next video. And another airplane. <laughs> video and there's like one every five minutes it feels like. You can still hear the airplane. Another airplane. Yep, another one. These are probably going to be really funny bloopers, like honestly. It's like they're just flying around in circles just trying to ruin my video. <laughs> Thank you.